and Jubilee family, welcome, welcome, welcome to our Wednesday night service. We're walking into the atonement of Jesus tonight in all kinds of beautiful and precious ways. We have testimonies, we've got word, prophetic words, we've got prayers, we've got worship, and I'm just so glad all of you can be with us. Welcome online family as well. We invite you into this time with us to press in and behold Jesus. As we prayed today throughout the day in the sanctuary from 6 to 6, it seemed to be the focus was the face of God, was the glory of God, was the goodness of God, was the tenderness of God, was the power of God, just enjoying all of his facets as we beheld him. So join us as we continue in that in our fellowship time tonight. We're going to start, I'm going to pray, and then our shofar team is going to call us into worship, and we'll begin with a new song that our pastor wrote on Sunday. So here we go. Holy One, we glorify you. We exalt you. We thank you, Lord, for this moment right now and all that you're doing in this moment, Lord. Be glorified in our midst. Be glorified in our worship. We are here for you, Jesus. We're here to behold you. We're here to tuck into your perfect love and to let your love wrap us, envelop us, and change us. Be glorified now, Lord as we glorify you, as we exalt you. In the name of your perfect son, Jesus, amen. Good. 
Good morning. 
righteousness are we made righteous only by your holiness can we live a holy life God it's only Jesus it's only you Jesus so we worship you tonight in Jesus name
you, Lord. But the only way we can do this is because of you and your righteousness. The only way we get there is by you. It's by your blood. It's by your mercy. It's by your love and your goodness, your sovereignty and your righteousness, God. It's your righteousness that makes us righteous, God. Thank you, Jesus.
to the King of Kings. You're the only name by which men can be saved. Thank you, Lord. Y'all can sit down. I just wanted to uh, share a testimony about uh, what God is doing in the Oxnard region in, uh, off Commercial and Oxnard Boulevard. And uh, yeah, the Lord has just really opened this place up to us. Um, like we've been going every Wednesday, we've seen like a number of people healed, a number of people delivered. And this Friday at 5 p.m., at 1260 South Oxnard Boulevard, we're going to be doing a really big uh, event that's never been done there before. We're going to have a barbecue. We're expecting close to 500 people to walk through and, and to show up. And so if you all could just pray into that and just believe that, um, you know, the word says it's not by might nor by strength, but by his spirit. And so uh, just that the spirit of God would just move, because even though we have food and we have you know, games and stuff. Really what we want is for these wonderful people to encounter him. And so uh, just be praying into that. I really believe it's going to be the first of many outreaches like this that we do. And so we are learning a lot. We're learning, you know, what to do and what not to do. But let's just go ahead and pray into that. Uh, God, I just thank you, first of all, that you opened a door that no man can shut and you closed doors that no man could open. And so, God, I just thank you, Lord, for the favor on this uh, outreach that we're doing at 5 p.m. on Friday. God, would you just come in there, Lord, with your presence, with your power, and with your fire, Lord. I pray, God, that we would be able to touch many, many people, Lord. I pray, God, that this church, Lord, would continue to grow in activation of the gospel, like it says in Romans chapter 1, 17, for I am unashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation. It's the dunamis power of God. And so, Lord, I just declare that there would be power that would go before us, Lord. It would touch hearts. It would shake atmospheres, Lord. And that place would not be unchanged, Lord God, but there would be, that place would be marked, Lord God. I pray for Bible studies to rise up out of that event. I pray, God, for relationships to be built, Lord God. And I just ask, God, that those people who encounter you would be ushered into a body. It doesn't have to be our body, but it, just a body, Lord God, where they, they could be discipled, mentored, where they could be part of a family. So God, we just declare that all of these things will come to pass, Lord, and greater things than we could possibly hope or imagine, Lord, would happen in this season with this new outreach that we are doing. And uh, I, got, I just pray for anyone who is feeling that stirring in their heart to want to be a part of these things, Lord. They want to be equipped. They want to be activated. Lord, would you just ignite boldness in them? Lord God, boldness that they've never, ever felt or heard or had before, God. Would you just ignite it in them, in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Amen. I'm in agreement, Pastor Mike. I tell you, the Lord these days are going to do quick surprises, suddenly, and add numbers. It's just like the... Uh, time when the disciples were up there waiting and at the upper room, just expecting, expecting, but they didn't know when, but the Lord just came and whoo, the wind came in and they received the Holy Spirit, spoken tongues and everything is happening and fire everywhere. So uh, we are definitely in agreement. These are the days the Lord wants this, to show himself real and big. And this morning when I woke up, I mean, I actually, uh, for those who are watching, I'm receiving the offering and God has something special for you to say because he already worked on me this morning. Pastor Brian asked me, I said, yes, I'm ready. The Holy Spirit's ready. The Lord's ready. He wants to give it back to you. So anyway, when I woke up this morning, he says, uh, he says, uh, I'd like you to say this, Rosie, thank me for your daily bread. And I said, okay, yes, Lord. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for my daily bread. And it kept on going all day long. And uh, the scripture is in Matthew 6, 9. It says, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. He wants to really make it personal to you because it really is when we say our Father. He really truly is our Father. And then, um, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth, headed in heaven. Give us, us today our daily bread. 
And he, re know, he knows when we are uh, just human and, and needing our nourishment and everything, but he's really, really also uh, uh, concerned about our daily events, our daily issues, our daily uh, breaking, now, the words breaking, not breaking, but dividing our uh, minutes or seconds and spread ourselves all around the whole day. And we need his wisdom, not the bread itself to eat, but the nourishment and wisdom and all that we do that it'll prosper. Just like when Jesus was on earth breaking the bread, what happened? In faith, it started multiplying. So wherever you are at, just at, thank him for the daily bread every single day. Not, don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will, you know, it, it, you just keep every, because that's what happened. I started thinking about tomorrow and the future and what's this and what. He says, uh, uh, keep, get, uh, pull your mind back and do not lean to your own understanding. Just know what I tell you on a daily basis. And he is saying, when I give you the daily bread, I want you to give part of that bread back to me because I want to multiply. Give it back to me. Give some of it back to me so I can multiply. Mm -hmm. So when uh, you prepare your offering or however you want to do it, uh, I just want you to know that this is a promise. This is a word for you today. And I'm just going to decree it and declare and release a blessing. The Lord is. So, Father God, yes, we are thanking you for our daily bread. Because you want your kingdom come, it shall be done on earth as in heaven. Heaven, oh, Father, is we, everything is happening in heaven. And we're pulling it in earth, Father, in the atmosphere where everything, Lord God, is supernatural and it's miracles. And Lord, we are expecting you to do big things in these last days, Father. Not just tomorrow, but today. It's happening today. Father, we give our offering to you, Father, and we are giving it to you wholeheartedly that you will multiply it. You've done it before and you'll do it again. And our hearts are just rejoicing and we thank you for all that you're doing. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you for this love, Lord. Thank you 
for the nail piercings. Thank you for the nail piercings. Wash me in your cleansing flow. Now all I know, now all I know is your forgiveness and embrace. Someone to just grab the communion thing with the communion cups in it and just put it up here on the stage. That'd be awesome. I thank you for your beautiful presence in here, Holy Spirit. And I had a different plan for right now. We're just gonna, it's just a time of connecting to the heart of the Lord um, and going in a little deeper than we're already in. And um, thank you. And um, if you guys wanna come up and just grab one of these, um, cups with communion. It has a wafer on top and a, and the juice on the bottom. Um, Raleigh, if I could have you just stay up, you can be down there, but if you could just stay up for just a second, if you're, um, oh, you can leave that there, but if you would just stay up just in case there's anyone that might not know the Lord or someone in the room that, um, doesn't know God, has never connected with him or, um, has never invited the Lordship of Jesus Christ into their life, I'm just gonna ask that you come and speak if you want him, if you wanna know him or and experience him, know what heaven is all about um, and what real life is, then I just invite you to come and speak with Raleigh. Um, but Holy Spirit, I just thank you for your blood. I just thank you uh, of Jesus. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for being in the room, for revealing the power of God I thank you that you are the Holy Spirit. You are holiness and power. You are wind, you are light. We adore you, God. We adore you. And so, Father, right now, we just take a second to remember Jesus, to remember our Redeemer, to remember the powerful one who now is seated at the right hand of the throne of God but who chose to be obedient to the Father and come down and in flesh and die so that we could be with him. And so, right, I just invite you to take that little wafer right now, and we're just going to individually ask the Lord. Thank you. We're just going to individually ask the Lord. Um, your body was broken for me, but can you tell me something specific for me that your body was broken for. It says that he was um, wounded for our transgressions. He, the, our iniquity was laid upon him. It says by his stripes we were healed. And so just ask the Lord, give him something that he already paid for. And so we ask you right now, God, reveal to my heart something that I am carrying, something that I'm holding on to, that you already paid for, that you want to take right now, in Jesus' name. Yeah, 
us. We give you that. We thank you for your body that was broken, for me, for that thing, for so much more, for sickness and disease and pain and heartbreak and loneliness and you, your body was broken. All my transgressions were put upon you. All my sin was put upon you. And we love you and we adore you and we choose to remember the righteousness of Jesus tonight. And just as you're holding on to the, the juice part, um, we remember your blood, Jesus. We don't forget what it took for our sin to be forgiven, for our life to be redeemed, for our life to be made brand new. You restored us to God. You did everything, God. And when you, when you rose, we rose with you. And I just thank you for the blood of Jesus. And go ahead and just take a second and ask him, Jesus, tell me something in my life that your blood covers, that your blood's paid for. of Jesus. We receive freedom. We receive freedom. You set the captives free. We receive healing. We receive a relationship with you that's pure. We receive freedom in our minds, our spirit, our soul, our body. Thank you, God. Go ahead and just drink. We love you, God. God, that our hearts would continually be in a place of communion with you, God. That it's not just an act that we do, but it's stepping into the reality of the cross in the reality of a life completely redeemed and set free because of Jesus. We love you. We love you. We love you, God. Just go ahead and thank him for all that he's paid for for you. One, two, one, here we go, good, that one can go there. Good evening, everybody. Oh, boy, that's, <laughs> ready, let's try this again. Good evening. Oh, that's a jubilee. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow, we've, we've had just an awesome day of prayer today. And some of the things that, that I just want to relate, a couple of things. We have a couple of testimonies, so if, if I've talked to you and that, you can come up. Phil, I know you'll be first after you get your camera and that, and we'll do those down there. But today, as they all get said, I was, uh, I've was i been been for the, about the last two weeks praying this prayer that comes out of, uh, out of Psalm 139. And it says, search me, O God. And that's verse 24, but there's no one back there to put it up, so you'll just have to listen to me. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way of everlasting. And we were in a prayer watch two weeks ago on Wednesday, and, I, and we were praying that prayer, and, and I remember praying it, and it stuck with me. So I've been, as I start each day, I've been, I've been starting in that place, saying, God, just search me. I, 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 I want to know you, but I also want to be known by you. And so this morning after I was praying that, I was on my way in. I did my, my daily Bible reading. You guys are all doing your Bible reading, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. thank you. Thank you. Come on, guys. We all did. And so I, I finished my Bible reading, and then I, and I'll tell you a little secret. I'll tell on myself, I went ahead and read yesterday's, parts of yesterday, I mean tomorrow's. I went ahead in read Leviticus uh, 23, which is for tomorrow, it's for the day, it's for the fall feasts. 
And while I was reading it, I was reading the parts in verse 27, and it says, and, and you shall afflict your soul and offer offerings made by fire to the Lord. And verse 29 says, and any person who is not afflicted in soul on that same day, that person will be destroyed from amongst the people. And then the last one, verse 32, and it says, and it shall be, or it shall uh, for, for you to a Sabbath of solemn rest, and you shall afflict your souls. So I was reading that section, and I kept hearing that afflict your soul. And I'm like, God, what, is, what do you mean by that? Because to me, what that means is to me to be harsh to myself, right? Afflict, like, you know, and I was like, that doesn't sound like God. That doesn't sound like him. So, you know, being as I, I did a quick research and I looked up that word into afflict. It means to occupy, to, to uh, oppress humbly, to, to bow down low, to, to become low, to depress, to, to um, cast down, to afflict, to stop, to stoop, to humble oneself, to bow down, to be humble. So I was like, okay, God, give me, I, I need a, I'm, I'm not the, the smartest person. I need a picture. What are you saying? And he's saying, it's, it's like to, to cast your eyes down, to bow the head, to be humble, right? And he brought me to, to James chapter 4, verse 6, where it says that God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. So what I was feeling was that what God was doing in this day of atonement, because we all know, right? I mean, I hope you all know. But in, in 1 John 2, verse 2, it says that he himself, that's Jesus, is the propiti propitiation, right? And that's a really big word. And what it, all it means is he became the atoning sacrifice, right? for our sins, and not just ours, but only, but for all the world's sins. So Jesus himself became the atonement, right, that we'll celebrate this coming weekend as we, as we celebrate the atonement, right, in the feast, is that we're celebrating Jesus who atoned for all the sin. So I was just like, okay, Jesus, then, then help me, because what is the difference between atonement and forgiveness, right? Because our sins are all forgiven, correct? Yes. Help me out, guys. But our sins are all, are your sins forgiven? Yes. In Jesus, all your sins are forgiven, right? As far as the east is from the west, they, 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 they're not going to ever meet, right? So what is the difference between atonement and forgiveness? And the Lord gave me this, this just this little thought in my thing is that the atonement the sacrifice was given so that we could Jesus was given as that sacrifice so that he could atone he could be the completeness of all of it before God right he became sin so right he became the disease he became the sacrifice for us right so that we could be forgiven so before father he became what we should have been. Does that, does that, you get it? He became my sin. He became my disease. He became my shortcomings. So that when I go to the Father in him, in Jesus, then I can be forgiven. See, forgiveness is the fruit of atonement. Right? It's the fruit. It's the thing that you that because Jesus did it all, then then you can be forgiven. Okay? So Father, I want to thank you. I want to thank you today for sending Jesus. And Jesus, I want to thank you for being obedient to the Father even unto death, as my sacrifice, as our sacrifice, as the sacrifice for the entire world. Father, you, Jesus became that. So that when I come to you in Jesus, when I come to you 
through the veil that is his flesh, Jesus, by the blood that you can forgive because Jesus already completed everything in that place of the atoning sacrifice. And we thank you for that today, Lord, in Jesus' name. Phil, would you come up and give your testimony? Is this thing? It's on. Is it working? I can hear it already. <laughs> Backwards. How's that, everybody? Can you hear me? Okay, good. Hey, good evening, Jubilee. Good evening. All right, we're here. Um, I was uh, asked to share for about five minutes, so if I go over, I expect the buzzer to go off and come get me. So I'm going to be quick and fast as best I can. There's a couple of things that um, God has been dealing with me, and I want to share it with you. Some of you have already heard what I've, I've said before, but I'm just going to touch on it real quickly. Uh, Diane, I'm going to put up, uh, or you can put up Proverbs 3, 9, and 10 for me, please. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of your increase. Why? So that your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Yes. Malachi 3.10. You all know this one. I'm waiting for it to show up on the screen. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. And here's what God says, and try me, try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven, and I'm gonna pour out for you such a blessing that there will be not enough room to receive it. Last one, Luke 6:38. Oh. oh. What's gonna happen when you tithe? Give and it would be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. Why am I bringing this up? Well, most of you or some of you know about the story of my watch. And I'm gonna tell it again, because it's a great story. Since I only have a few minutes, I'll hurry up. About five years ago, I was sitting back in the back of the church with my mom and my, my wife, and I wasn't really involved with the church too much, and, and I'm sitting there, we're praising the Lord, and the service is over with, and all of a sudden, God says to me, and by the way, I had a $1,400 watch at that time. It was a Rado, beautiful watch. And then God says to me, I want you to give Pastor Steve your watch. And I went, get behind me, Satan. <laughs> He says, no, I want you to give Pastor Steve your watch. I said, he doesn't, he doesn't even know who I am. He says, go give him your watch. So I kind of meander up to the podium to the front here, and I said, uh, I'm trying to get out of it. I said, Pastor Steve, I, I, I see you don't really wear a watch, do you? I'm trying to, you know, work my way out of this thing. He says, well, I really don't. I got my cell phone. and I'm, I said, well, you know, maybe you don't like to wear a watch or something. And I said, Ugh. I said, here, I took my watch off. I said, God told me to give you my watch. So I gave it to him, and uh, I, I'm not sure if my wife was really happy about that when I went back and told her. And so I went home going, man, that was a $1,400 watch. Oh, man, what am I going to do? So about four days goes by, and uh, my brother, my middle brother, who's loaded, he has Rolexes and all kinds of watches. He looks at me, he goes, I see you're not wearing a watch. I go, yeah, I didn't tell him what happened. I said, yeah, I don't have a watch anymore. He goes, hang on. So he comes back, and he gives me this Tag Hauer watch worth $4,500. <laughs> I went from $1,400 to $4,500. It's a 321% increase <laughs> just by obeying the voice of the Lord. Yes, Jesus. Okay, second story. And I'll, I still got time. I am working on God the Father. I came from a background where, and I know none of you have the same impression or, or picture of God the Father, but in my mind growing up as a young boy and through, through childhood and, and adulthood, I pictured God sitting on the throne with a big long gray beard and a big baseball bat, and he says, if you ever move him, you know, bam, you sin, bam, you did that, bam. That was my thought process of God the Father. Uh, no one else here has had the same vision like me, right? Okay, good. I'm just the only one like that. 
and no one online either. Anyway, <laughs> so Joseph Prince, by the way, the pastor uh, you guys know from uh, Singapore, I was reading his blog one day, and he had the same vision of God the Father as I did. So I go, whoa, well, wait a minute, I'm not alone. I think God's got this big, long beard, gray, gray beard, and the baseball bat and whatever. And God said to Joseph Prince, and this is profound, he says, why do you look at me like that? He's, and God said to Joseph Prince, I am not old. There is no curse in heaven. And I went, oh, no, whoa. Uh, Diana, John 14, 9, and Colossians 1, 15. So I said, okay, so God is not old. And then all of a sudden, I read John 14. And it said, Jesus said to him, and this has really hit me hard. It says, have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? <laughs> That's my name. I went, uh, duh. <laughs> he who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? And then in Colossians 1.15, he, Jesus, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. God and Jesus look alike. When Jesse Duplantis, who you guys all know, he went to heaven for five hours, and I listened to this. It's the most phenomenal thing you have to listen to. It's called Close Encounters of the God Kind. He got to meet David and Abraham, but he met, got to meet Jesus. And Jesus came to him face on. He said his hair was glowing silver, and that was the glory of God. But then Jesus turned his head to the side, and he saw brownish red streaks through his hair. He said Jesus was about 5'10 to 6'1, which is about my height. And so I go, oh, cool, I can look at Jesus eyeball to eyeball. He's about my height. So when he said that, I went, brownish red hair. He's about 30, 33 years of age. And then Jesus says to Jesse Duplantis, I've got to go to the throne. Because everything up in heaven is throne-oriented. And then Jesse is prostrate on the ground. He can barely raise his body up to see what's going on, but he sees God the Father's hands and his feet at the throne. And then he sees, let me put my book down, then he sees Jesus go into the throne, and the throne is like, <laughs> surging with this tremendous power, just glorious power, pulsating back and forth. And then he sees Jesus walk into the Father and walk out the other side and then walk into the Father and walk out the other side. And I went, yeah, of course, they're both the same. They're identical. And then I, I, when I read any of Paul's letters, he always will say, somewhere in the third verse of each chapter, the first chapter, he'll always say, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I go, well, of course, because they're both the same. So from now on, whenever you hear or see or talk about God the Father, Think of that young guy, no baseball bat, no gray beard, glorious looking, no, no curse, but pure love. So I want to thank you in the name of Jesus for showing me yes, Jesus. a glimpse, a snapshot of what God the Father looks like, because I've seen Jesus. Yeah. And we thank you, Lord, that you have given us the revelation, knowledge in this latter times, and latter days, to know that there is power in tithing that you will send back to us our good measured pressed down and shaken together and running over and we will constantly give to you so we thank you lord that we are able to to give and we thank that we're able to see god in heaven amen thank you amen. thank you jesus d's going to come up and then we have uh Roland and Susan, so if you guys want to come and start to take. Shalom. Shalom. That is wholeness and completeness Complete. in Christ Jesus. The peace and shalom of Jesus. Whew. Jesus. You know, I, uh, at the watch today, we had a oh, glorious time. More and more at the watches, I just don't want to leave. I had two hours and I got to go here, there, and get kids and anything, but I don't want to leave because the encounters with him and sharing 
the fragments of what we collect from what he gives whole by Holy Spirit is just unbelievable. And then we get to come here and share it. It's so it's awesome. Who I love my Jubilee family. I love the body of Christ family online. It's a good day to be in Christ Jesus. Come get you some. <laughs> come get you some. So <laughs> um, I'm sorry, but I can't really share the full testimony today that from the watch. It was about a miracle that God performed for me. But I'll touch on it just a little bit. Because um, what I have to share is what God has been doing in my heart. And I woke up early this morning and was praying. And um, I love to sing. Sometimes I'm tone deaf, but God loves it anyway. Um, so I couldn't get away from John 4, 24. And if you want to put it up, that's fine. John 4, 24. And, um, you know, it says that. God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. There's a, another part of that section just above it where it says that's what the Father seeks, worshipers in spirit and truth. So I just was praying in the spirit a lot this morning, and all these choruses kept coming back to me from 25, 30 years ago that I would sing in church on my own in my quiet time in devotions. And then there were a few little songs that God gave me of my own, and I just would say, well, thanks, Lord. That's just for me. And I said, okay, God, that's for me. But the thing that I want to share is what God was saying to me this morning with regard to the healing that he brought me, that I don't get to linger and focus on that miracle, even though it's miraculous, and I want to give a testimony of that. Because what he put in my spirit deeply was, I just need you to know I just need you to know that as I come to you and bring healing, deliverance, salvation, it's still part of this expectation and hope. Diana was speaking about it in the prayer today. It's a joyful expectation. So when the miracle comes, it's like, oh my gosh, look, I got a phone. That's what Holy Spirit said to me. It's glorious at the moment, but even it kept coming up in the watches for a couple of weeks. We don't stop looking at the one who gives the healing and the miracles and the deliverance and salvation to glory and the gift that he's given. <laughs> we keep looking at him. And so thank you, Jesus, for healing my knee a couple of weeks ago when I fell flat on my bottom and I didn't know how I was going to get up. And I stayed and I prayed in the spirit with my kids, believing in faith and hoping. But that expectation and joyful expectation, it came from in here because I want you to know in my flesh, it didn't know what to do. It was struggling between fear and doubt. But when I stood, I just started praising him and worshiping him. And there was no pain. Not only that, the range of motion was more than it had been before. And I said, glory to you, Lord. But he keeps saying this morning, don't you know, <laughs> there's so much more. Just keep beholding me. And so he keeps saying, I am a spirit. <laughs> Worship me in spirit and truth. Because that's what I long for from you. I long for you. It says in Psalm 27, Verse 8, you said, seek my face, and my heart said, your face I will seek. And then in another part of Psalm 27, it says, there's only one thing, Lord, that I desire, and this one thing I will seek after. Lord, <laughs> to behold your beauty, Lord. <laughs> 
one thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold your beauty, <laughs> the beauty of the Lord, and inquire in his temple. Lord, that's what we desire, and so Lord, I don't have anything else to offer except for be in love with Jesus and seek him with your whole heart. Even as he gives gifts that you have longed for and hoped for with expectation, make him more of your joyful expectation because he's coming. He's coming. He's coming. And Lord, we do long for your beauty. And Lord, we do exalt you in the beauty of your holiness and say that you are holy. And we love you, Jesus. Oh, bless you tonight, family. Thank you, dude. You, you want to meet? The, you can go down there. You want to share? You can, you can both have one. Huh. I will share first about the uh, our time this morning. I'm I'm in the 6 a.m. prayer until 10 o'clock. So this morning, the Lord showed us about the condition of the heart. There are hearts that em that is empty. There are hearts that are wounded. There are hearts with many thorns. And there are hearts that is confused. So the, we, the Lord says, offer your heart to me. Offer your heart to me. Offer, offer that broken heart to me. And I will bring healing. So that's what the Lord showed us this morning. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I'm so glad that I belong to Jesus. And I belong also to the family of God. And I know that this house is a house of prayer for all nations. All the flags that represented there, they have ethnic groups. They have different hundreds of the ethnic groups. And we are so blessed to go out there and to reach out to these tribal pastors and missionaries working in the field. So our, our uh, ministry is uh, to encourage pastors and missionaries out in the field. And with that encouragement, not only the prayers that we bring, the words as the Lord gave us a word for them, but also uh, goods. So we call ourselves donkeys for Jesus. So we carry the, the goods, literally goods. Name it. Uh, clothes, shoes, rice, groceries, everything that they need. So I, the mission that we, uh, when we uh, went last Ju uh, July, uh, actually the admission did not start in the Philippines. The mission started already here because uh, we have uh, a friend in, uh, in the Philippines. Uh, her sister was diagnosed with cancer in she lives in San Diego, and uh, she really asked us to say to uh, and ask as for help. Help! She said, hey, "Please, can you go and uh, reach out to my sister?" So we have to drop everything and schedule to go. And she was at the hospital at that time, and she was diagnosed like April last week of April, and. Uh, it only take like almost four weeks and she passed away. But the good thing is we obeyed. We obeyed the promptings of the Lord and also we take heed of the request of our friend to go there and then at the hospital we were able to minister to her and also to the family. We did a Zoom uh, some Zoom call, and we are able to lead her back to the Lord. She is, amen. That's one thing. She was a Christian broadcaster in the Philippines before, but when she came to the, to the United States, she went astray. But you know what? 
during the time that we are praying for her, I just cried and cried and cried for the mercy of the Lord. Because even at the last moment, the Lord gave her a chance. Gave her a chance to give her life back to the Lord. He said, wow, Lord, you are so merciful. Your judgment always, your mercy always triumphs over judgment. And that's one of the miracles. And then prior to that, uh, we have also uh, one of the highlight, you know, the highlight of uh, the ministry that we had is started here. We are praying for this man. His name is Enon. Enon is a second generation missionary of youth with a mission. His parents are, his parents are missionaries. But just something happened to him. He went to, uh, he went abroad and he was uh, um, expelled from uh, Norway. And then it came to the point that he tried everything. He came to the point that he said, okay, I will not serve the Lord. I will just do my own thing. And then here again, I cried again. So Lord, you, you, you have your hand upon this man. I cried and said, Lord, bring him back. Bring him back. Lord, if this is the only one that you, uh, our mission is to go there and bring this man back to the Lord, to serve the Lord, it is worth it, Lord. So I cried and I cried. And you know what? Pastor Steve uh, preached last Sunday about the, the ransom of the Lord shall return. I said, wow, that's it. That's him. And he was, he, we, we were able to convince him to come to our outreach. We, this time, our outreach is uh, not, not too long. We only like, like plan like uh, three weeks almost, but we traveled 2,500 kilometers by land through driving and plus another four nights uh, uh, slow boat. So I don't know how, how you calculate that in miles, but just say 2,000 miles. But still, it's still in my, in my uh, what I feel is that I did not do any, uh, we did, I did not do any math. Um, uh, uh, I did not do a lot. Because compared the last time we have 11 locations, we went to different uh, locations. And this time we only go to five different locations. But one thing, the good, well, one good thing is that those pastors and missionaries that we reach out, they are mostly working among the tribals and among the island people. That's just one thing. So my wife is going to share more of the details, but one of the highlights is that Enon now committed himself to go back to Waiwam, Cebu, where we are uh, stationed. Thank you, Lord. We, my husband told about the, the, our friend, our sister friend who died in San Diego. There is a purpose why he shared that. Um, a little act of kindness, the Lord unfolded a domino effect of his plan. This, this lady in San Diego, the one who died, he, she don't have any family here. Her family is in the Philippines. So when we went there, we just take video call with her, with the family. So, but first, thank you very much for all your support, for standing with us, believing that the Lord has called us to reach out the pastors, to encourage the pastors and missionaries. It says in Matthew 10, 42, if you give even a cup, and whoever gives one of the little ones only a cup of cold water in the name of a disciple, assuredly, I say to you, he shall by no means lose his reward. So anyone who prayed, anyone who gave, will always have the reward from the Lord. And in Proverbs 19, 17, if you help the poor, if you help the poor, you are lending to the Lord. And he will repay you. 
Yeah, that's Proverbs 19:17. 19, 17. 19. So, the Lord has a plan. When we, he, the family asked us to carry the urn with ashes with us. And it, for, at first, it's scary for me to carry this dead person with us, ashes remain. It's scary. Because, but then the family is asking us, please, please, we don't like her to be like a cargo. We want to honor her. So the Lord gave us courage to carry her and bring it there. And then I told them that you need to be in YWAM and welcome her when we arrive. So they were there. The family was there, and those, the family was not getting along with each other before, but then because of this urn given to them, family were reconciled, asking forgiveness, releasing forgiveness, releasing the love because of this person. And we share, we know we, you know, we have a, we have a mission, we have a vision, that the Lord will, that we need, we will buy a land in the Philippines to house the retiring pastors and missionaries because there's no retirement plan in the Philippines, especially those people in the poor area. But then the Lord gave us this man, the, the brother-in-law of this uh, dead person, that he, he was a missionary in Chiang Mai, and he has the heart for the pastors and missionary. And little did we know that the little act of kindness, this man is a director of farming and forestry in a state university. And he was able to, to allow us to have a seminar for farming and for forestry. So whatever is in the future, the Lord is starting to, to reveal to us, training us, and bringing the right people for us. And they say that if we have the land, they will send a team for, to know the condition of the soil, to know what plants can be planted there. And they have a technology, a drone, that they will see the water. And they will send a team for free. Amen. And they will give us seedlings what to plant there. So the Lord is really, really into this, this vision. In our seminar, I have this important revelation in the farming. You know, I don't know anything about farming. I don't know anything about, about the, the soil. It says there, the trees needs to be stressed so the roots will become strong. Yeah. So the, the, the typhoons and the winds, we need to welcome them for the trees. <laughs> and if you will, 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 will see that in the spiritual world, mm. our stress yes. becomes a strong. No water, it's drought. The trees will learn their roots to go down deep and find water to live. So if we feel dry in ourselves, we need to go down and deep, deep down with the Word of God. That's our water. Yes. The Holy Spirit will help us to live. Fruit-bearing trees, they need stress, even to the point of, what do you call that, hacking? Uh, hacking. hacking. You need to, the bark, you need to do like that to the bark. You need to hack it like that with the machete or a, yeah, machete. so that it will bear fruit. Mm. I did not know that. Yeah, they need to be hurt to bear fruit. So in our life, we will be hurt. We will not be, we will not be, <laughs> we will not have any excuse because the Lord wants us to bear fruit. And a special revelation, there is the, this called agar-agar wood. It's, it, it's inside a na native tree. I know I'm already almost. But the process of this agar-agar wood, it's a native tree. 
it's, it's a big tree. The worm will create a hole and stay until it becomes a butterfly. So the, the worm will come and create the hole, stays there, then become butterfly. And then an ants, the ants will go there in that hole. And when the ants go there, it, it infects the tree. And when it's infected, the agar agar wood will be created inside. The agar agar wood, you can see the process. There's a worm. There's the ants. And it's a, it's a forest. So the soil and the environment, it's so humid. And the soil, it's, it's so humid. Everything is humid. But it creates inside that, that when the ants go there and the, it creates pun, punjai, yeah, fungus. Yeah. The fungus creates the agar agar. And the agar agar, the agar agar is the, it creates, the agar agar produces the expensive perfume the raw material of medicine and the essential oil. It creates this worm, these ants, the environment and the soil create this precious thing. How much more in our life that worms, that things in our life that creates ugliness in us then things outside still bombard us. But if we will go down deep to the word, there will be a precious perfume of the presence of the Lord in our life. Amen. That's the big thing that happened to me. We gave, oh, the pictures. I forgot the pictures. <laughs> Almost that. Where's the picture? I'm so excited with that so <laughs> Yeah. Outreach in the Philippines. The pictures speak louder. So we arrive at three o'clock in the morning. There's our truck. That's a boat. We ride in the boat. Three o'clock. Okay. That's the pastors that we did the seminar, love lang five la love language. They, because there's lots of broken relationship happening everywhere. Because the love tank of the wife or the husband is not being filled. We need to learn the language, the love language of our husband or our wife. So that our relationship will become strong. So this is the bamboo church. This is in Bindanao where the Muslim are. This is the dangerous place. We, it's in the middle of the mountains. See the church. It's made of bamboo and look at the plants. They put all the plants there and then suddenly the, uh, the snakes go there too. So, <laughs> so because it's in the middle of the... So more, the, those are the pastors, lots of pastors. There was a pastor, okay. Look at the children. Oh, the sis candy. The, the sis candy gave us candies. So all the people, the children, the old people, they don't have... Candy like that, so they enjoy. See, look at that. <laughs> they are enjoying. <laughs> yeah. The, thank you for this candy. <laughs> so they are so happy. So this, look at the, in the middle, there is this pastor who, uh, he was blind. And he's serving the Lord. When I saw him, I was, I was crying because even he is blind. He is still, you know, the, 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 the fire in his heart to serve the Lord. So, I, and he, he, he traveled one whole day to reach the place. So, instead of giving the rice to him, I give him the money and he will buy in their place. And I did not know that they, he has, he adopted also seven children to disciple them in prayer. And then, 
When they cooked the rice, these children were so happy because this is their first time to, to eat a very special rice. Yes. So these are pastors from the tribe. They, we met them at 7 o'clock in the morning before we travel again. Okay. So the beautiful sky. These are the, this is the truck. We call him, we call the truck Goshen. So Goshen means uh, land of plenty. So we are raising fund for that because I need to pay that for uh, in this, uh, uh, until December, $23,000. And I at uh, $23,000 and I have $2,000. So I need $21,000. <laughs> Those are 120 pounds rice, yeah. so it's heavy. 120 yeah. pounds rice each. So we gave them shoes, clothes, yeah. and they are, they are so happy. Everybody is happy with the shoes and clothes. That's why the truck is full because we are carrying a lot. So another candy of sis candy. So we gave also sack surprise with these people. They are, it's really hard for them to earn because it's always raining. So yeah, thank you for the prayers because anywhere we go, there is no rain. But there's typhoon everywhere. But there's typhoon all over the Philippines. But every time we left the place, they are flooded. They are. So the sunshine is following us. Because of the prayer of the saints. Yeah. These are our team. And Le Enon, that what my husband is sharing is that guy in, or in the middle, the orange one. He, the Lord told him about farming also for the pastors and missionary. He went to Norway to earn before the pandemic. He tried to earn and then put in the stock. And then pandemic came. All the money is gone. And he tried to work again, but then there was this uh, people. There was a person who wants to kill his friend, so he he protect him, he protect him, and then he was he was stabbed from the back in one inch to the heart. So the yeah, and I and he doesn't like to serve the Lord, but then I, we keep on praying. My husband was crying for for to the Lord for him. But now he is committed to be part of that Goshen Haven and Prayer Mountain. Wow. Yeah. Uh -huh. So this is the church in one of the mountains. Look, there is no roof. And this is the toilet. I was looking for the toilet and there is no toilet. And I saw this one. I saw. So <laughs> there is this bamboo. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for all your, all your prayers. Okay, we will, I will pray. Lord, we want to thank you, Lord God. First, Lord God, that you want us to offer our heart to you. Yes. The broken heart, the wounded heart, yes. the stony heart, Lord God, yes. whatever the condition of our heart, Lord God, you want us to offer to you because you want to touch that heart, Lord God, and bring healing. And we want, Lord God, your healing to be upon each one of us, even to the people, Lord God, who is in the... In, in the Online, Lord God, that you will bring healing to that heart right now. Yes, and their heart will be soft before you. And we will look for, Lord God, the water, the living water of your word that our heart yes. will be filled, will be healed by your word, Lord yes, God. Father. Thank you, Father. And Lord, we pray for, Lord God, release your blessing, Lord God, for those people who bless us, who pray for us. Yes, release Father. the blessing and yes, the reward Father. for them in the name of Jesus, yes, Lord God. And we want to thank you continue to stir up their hearts lord god to be part of what you want to do in the in your kingdom lord god continue to stir up the hearts of men lord god and put the pastors and missionary in their heart that they will be willing lord god to give to your kingdom lord god in yes, whatever lord. way lord god you are the one who will be glorified in this thank you father thank you jesus thank you holy spirit in the name of Jesus, amen. amen.